Hey guys, Chad Hoover, Kayak Bass Fishing, and welcome to this video called Don't Be a Jerk. All right, so the video Don't Be a Jerk is obviously not a video about a flaw in your character or how you treat other people, though realistically, you should treat other people the way that you want to be treated. So I guess treating other people poorly who don't deserve it is a character flaw, but that's not what this video is about. So here's the deal. I do not go fishing without a jerk bait in my box, a jerk bait box in my boat, in my kayak. It might not be in the primary rotation position. It might not be the bait that I go to for the trip, but at some point during the trip, it may be the bait that I go to. So I'm just gonna show you kind of a, a quick walkthrough of my jerk bait box. And this is primarily, um, somehow or another, this dude got in my jerk bait box. You do not belong in the jerk bait box. You are a square bill. Square bills go in the square bill box. So anyway, <laughs> jerk baits should be in every kayak tackle box out there because they're versatile, all right? I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about jerk baits and why I say don't be a jerk. Because realistically, the jerk is not what catches fish. It's the paws. So I really think that if these were marketed correctly, or if, as anglers we refer to them correctly, we would call them paws baits. Because we talk about a bait because we wanna talk about catching fish, not fishing for fish. And so realistically, a jerk bait is what you do to get their attention. But the pause, in most cases, is what you do to catch them. So what I really like is a natural colored bait, okay? I like a bait that is, uh, you know, white or chrome or silver colored uh, with an olive to green to blue pearl to bl even a black back um, in most conditions, okay? Because that bait is going to be very versatile. I like to add a little extra color and flash and things into it and kind of deviate from there like maybe going to a sexy shad with the, I gotta let the UPS truck deliver real quick. Anyway, all right, so, um, you know, add some flash, add some color, you know, like this sexy shad color right here with a little bit of, uh, you know, a different color line on it. You know, and then you can go to your chromes and your really metallic-y colors and all that kind of stuff. And there is a specific rhyme or reason to the type of baits that you, that you pick uh, and the colors that you pick. But what the purpose of this video is, is to tell you that if you're not fishing jerk baits, you should. Anytime it rains, when it first starts raining, that, that kind of stirs up the plankton and phytoplankton, zooplankton, all that kind of stuff in the, in, the, in the ecosystem, okay? It brings bait fish to the surface, and a lot of times it brings the predators to the surface. And so for me, pretty much any time it just starts raining, I'll throw in a jerk bait, middle of the summer, 150 degrees, 20 degrees outside in the middle of the, the winter, I don't care. I like to throw a jerk bait when it starts to rain. Nine times out of 10, the rain is, is, is warmer than the water, okay? And so what happens a lot of times, if you guys remember from a lot of my other videos, is that cold water is more dense than warm water. And so cold water will sink and it'll force the warm water to the top. Well, what do you think happens in the middle of the winter when it's 40 degrees outside, and I mean, 40 degree water temperature, and then it's 65 degrees like it is today, and it rains. Well, when it rains, for the most part, that rain is plus or minus a few degrees of the outside air temperature. Even though it comes from high, blah, 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 it's still pretty close to the outside air temperature. So what you end up having is you end up having this layer of water on the surface that's the warmest. It brings the bait fish to the surface. It may be not enough to surface or to cover the biomass of a largemouth, but it brings them up to feed. Okay, so that's one reason. And in that case, when I've got rain and I've got flash and I've got color, I like to go to a more solid color. I like a white, uh, I like a, a really, really, really like a chrome gold. That chrome gold gives me the best of both worlds, okay? Um, but if it's really raining and it's overcast, I like a dark bait because the bottom of the water surface is gonna be a little bit more reflective. So I want something that's gonna contrast you know, against that. Um, but if it stays a light drizzle, okay? If it stays a really, really light drizzle, then what I might even do is go to a deeper diving crankbait like one of these two here, okay? A blue chrome in a heron lake, that gold 
uh, chartreuse and red clown uh, and a little bit more stained water or if there's no heron present or if I'm not fishing a heron lake. And what I like to do is rip, rip, pause. And what that's gonna do is get it a little further down, which gives that fish an angle to see it and get it out of that surface chop. And then I'll just let that bait rise back up. And because it's a pause and it's rising, that's action. And so a lot of times I'll do rip, rip, stop, glide. I'll just barely move my rod tip. And then I'll, I'll give the line back. And as it's rising on a free line, I'll start reeling up my slack. And a lot of times I'll get that hit right then. Or when I start to move my rod tip again, there's a fish there, load it up, set the hook. And by and large with treble hooks, the fish almost set themselves. And when they're up feeding, surface feeding, they go up and grab and turn, they almost set themselves. So for the most part, I really like to fish these in cool to cold water. Uh, anytime I'm getting away from a lipless crank, uh, a little bit too cold for the crankbait bite to be 100% effective. I want it to stay in the strike zone a little longer. I don't want it to get down into thicker cover. I want to keep it across the top. Or I know what that depth of cover is, uh, you know, like taking one of these a little bit deeper divers and getting it down and just ticking the edge of that grass or running it right along the top of it and stopping it. And it presents itself as an opportunistic feeder. You almost get a reaction strike out of it just staying there too long. A lot of people think of a reaction bite as it has to hit something. It has to deflect on something. Sometimes a reaction bite is just that the, the, the presentation that you did created a reaction to make that fish feed. Whereas if you had just reeled it on by, it wouldn't have eaten it. It wouldn't have eaten in it. But if you stop it and it hangs there, especially if you add suspend strips, if you add weight to your baits by drilling a hole in the top and adding a little tungsten powder and a little epoxy, and we'll get into all that later. Um, but if you're not fishing a jerk bait, probably 60% of the season, as a primary method, you're wrong, okay? I'm just gonna say it. You can hate me if you want to. You can beat me up in the comment section. But I've got a jerk bait on my box, jerk bait box, and I'm gonna vary the presentation. One of the things that I do quite a bit that catches me a lot of fish, and I don't have this set up right now because I'm not pre or post spawn fishing, but I'll take a jerk bait. I'll take the, all the hooks off. I'll put a bigger split ring on the back and put a J hook on the back of it. And I'll skip it under docks. And then I'll rip, rip, stop, and I'll run it into the pylons. I'll actually throw it around a pylon and work it down and it hits that pylon and works its way around the pylon and comes up so that I don't have to worry about those treble hooks hanging up. And I catch fish after fish after fish. But a lot, 95.98% of the time, it's rip, rip, pause. And it's that pause that's the cause for them to murder it. So I'm a jerk bait guy, but I think we named it wrong. Don't be a jerk, be a pause, and you'll catch more fish. Put a jerk bait box together, add stuff to it, learn when to fish, which ones when. I'll come back and do a video when I'm on the water to talk about what jerk baits I'm fishing. In fact, one of the things that I'm gonna do this year is I'm gonna show you guys in real time, um, let's say it's clear skies and clear water, and I'm using a translucent bait, okay? I'm gonna find one real quick just to make this point and we'll call this video done and we'll come back to that later. Um, I'm gonna use a translucent bait. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use a bait that the light passes through like this one right here and I'm gonna catch fish, okay? And then I'm gonna use a translucent bait, like one of these smaller baits right here, like these Rapalas, right? These little skinny minnow jerk baits. And I'm gonna catch fish on it, okay? And then I'm gonna take a bait like this, this, this more translucent one right here, uh, and I'm gonna catch fish on it, okay? Where you can see through it, where the light actually passes through it. And we're gonna catch fish. And then while we're catching fish, while we know the bite is on, we're gonna switch to a solid profile, a chrome, a gold, uh, we're going to switch over to a, a pearl white, or we're going to switch over to a white sexy shad and stop catching fish. And I'm going to show you guys real time the difference between color and contrast and the difference between something that shows up and something that doesn't when fish are feeding, especially when they're feeding up. If it's overcast, the top of the water looks one way. If it's clear, the top of the water looks another way. If water's stained, it looks a completely different way. So in stained water, I like to use something really bright or something really dark. That depends on whether I've got light penetration or no light penetration. Dark water, dark sky, dark bait. Dark water, light sky, bright bait, okay? So we'll talk more about that in future videos. I wanna tell you right now in the winter, start stocking up on your jerk baits. I wanna tell you right now during the winter, fish jerk baits. If it rains when you're fishing, don't go home, get out of jerk bait. If it drizzles, stay out there, keep fishing. That warmer water 
surface layer is going to activate the entire food chain, kind of like the domino effect. And if you sit there and you wait, you'll see a boil. And when you see that boil cast away past it, snatch, snatch, pause, snatch, pause, snatch, pause, play with the cadence, figure out what they want. And eventually you're going to catch that fish that you thought was uncatchable. You're gonna catch that fish in the winter time in the top two to three feet of the water column that you thought you had to drag a bait on the bottom to catch, that you thought you had to be fishing slowful, painfully, okay? You stay active, you stay interested, you stay engaged, you stay warm, and you really have an opportunity to catch that ultimate fish of a lifetime. Three or four days into a warming trend, when it rains on day two and day three, that hair on the back of my neck stands up. This thing stays underneath the seat of my kayak. I have one, two, sometimes three jerk baits tied on because don't be a jerk, be a pause. Anyway, I hope this bait video, lure video, helped you um, put yourself together a little jerk bait box. Keep jerk baits in your arsenal. And I'll talk more about how to use the versatile jerk bait throughout the seasons in an upcoming video, but that's my winter time tip. Stock, on, stock up on some jerk baits. Get out there and fish them. Experiment with them, but be ready to throw one of these things anytime it drizzles. But again, don't be a jerk, be a pause. Smash that thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, turn your notifications on and leave a comment below. So we'll, uh, we'll see you next time here on Kayak Bass Fishing. And uh, I'm Chad Hoover and we're done. That's the end of the video.